Hello, everybody, and welcome. FreeBSD is a free and open source Unix-like operating system descended from the Berkeley software distribution, itself based on research Unix. It is arguably the closest descendant to the original Bell Labs Unix and considered by many, on a technical basis, to be true Unix, trademark issues aside. It has a fascinating history. Historically, Unix was always distributed together with its source code, starting the culture of open collaboration in software development that we see today. AT&T was banned from selling directly into the markets, so Unix users would license the source code and modify it freely up to their needs. Berkeley acquired the license and, just like most Unix licensees, started modifying the source code. Anyone using BSD had to acquire a license from AT&T though, because BSD contained AT&T source code. In the late 80s, work to replace the AT&T source code began, culminating with the release of 386 BSD. The development was slow, so a group of 386 BSD users branched out their own release that ended up being baptized FreeBSD. AT&T was not happy and sued a company called BSDI that had released BSD386. Part of the settlement involved the commitment to remove any AT&T source code from the product. Even though they were not involved, FreeBSD thought wise to follow suit and, in November 1994, released FreeBSD 2.0, the first version without any AT&T source code. Some say that the lawsuit and, its, and all the legal insecurity around using BSDs was instrumental in the success of Linux. Unlike Linux, FreeBSD is a full operating system, not just a kernel. The project delivers kernel, device drivers, user land utilities, and documentation. Linux also has a different licensing style. If I'm not mistaken, you can lock in modifications you do to the code and keep it as your own, whereas in Linux you must follow GPL. Command line utilities are very similar. During my last six months daily driving FreeBSD, I encountered very few differences. Most of the software available for Linux is also available on FreeBSD. FreeBSD also includes a Linux compatibility layer and can run Linux binaries. Linux, on the other hand, can't directly run FreeBSD binaries. As mentioned before, the FreeBSD team provides sublime documentation and things really work the way you expect them to do. This was my main motivation to start using FreeBSD, as Linux had turned too annoyingly unpredictable to me and I got tired of swallowing Wayland, systemd and replacing ifconfig with IP in my scripts. I don't have to relearn everything every few years. I want to keep learning new things instead of relearning what I already know. FreeBSD boots to a command prompt, but you are free to install any desktop environment you wish for. I followed Vermadden's excellent FreeBSD tutorials and am the happiest with OpenBox. It's light, doesn't throw notifications on my face, respects my screen real state and do nothing unexpected. The amount of customization you can do on it is surreal, allowing you to add statues and taskbars, customize the menus, change the widgets, and so on. Back to FreeBSD. Since you can run whatever desktop environment you want, FreeBSD gets a 10 out of 10 for user interface. Nothing is set out of the box. You need to pick everything from desktop environment, drivers for power management, modules to load on startup, and etc. So, unlike a system like Cubes OS or Haiku, yes, you could get to that level of functionality, including Cubes perversive virtualization or Haiku's highly efficient user interface, but you need to build everything on your own. So I give it 5 points for being able to do everything, 3 points for the excellent documentation, and I won't grant the final 3 points because it's just too much work to get your system running smoothly. Battery life is excellent. I easily get 5 plus hours of real work on my ThinkPad W3530 and it's old battery. However, you need to do a lot of tweaking to get there. FreeBSD is not as compatible with everything as Linux is. Wireless support is problematic. I had to patch my ThinkPad W530 firmware to remove the wireless card whitelist, allowing me to install any card, and ended up getting an Atheros that supports it out of the box. 
also tends not to be compatible with the cutting edge, meaning that you should stay a generation or two behind for full compatibility. My PostScript printer works flawlessly for video, and Nvidia publishes official drivers for the platform, and AMD's open source drivers are very good. Compared to Linux, you will find the offer of applications to be a bit reduced. There is no Steam, and proprietary Linux applications are usually not available on FreeBSD natively. The usual stuff works. You get GIMP, LibreOffice, Firefox and Chrome, IDEs, emulators, etc. Unlike Haiku, you will find your experience very similar to Linux. As I've already mentioned, Steam is not supported under FreeBSD. However, you get access to most of the inventory of open source games, and most of them are free built. I built some games on my own and faced no issues. However, some OpenGL software crashed using the NVIDIA drivers when I was testing it. You get the latest release of Firefox and Chrome. I had no problems with anything, including joining Teams and Zoom meetings via browser. Due to the fact that you must install everything, your system is very safe, as the attack scope is very narrow out of the box. However, this means you also must install and configure your own firewall and antivirus. There is no free lunch in the world. Just like vanilla Linux, in FreeBSD, your applications have the same access rights as your user account, meaning that a malicious application can read all your personal data, if it wants. You can install vanilla browsers, but Brave is not available as a package, so you are also depending on installing plugins for privacy, ad blocking, etc. Fingerprinting is an issue. Very few people run FreeBSD as workstation OS, so it's much easier to identify an individual machine on the internet. Boot speed will depend on what you have installed in your system and what modules and drivers you load at startup. It's good enough, though. FreeBSD is the free operating system for the technologically conservative, so it suits me better than Linux. I used to appreciate every new version of everything back when I was a child and teenager, where computer performance and new features really made a difference. Linux has been quite chaotic, and things change sometimes for arbitrary reasons. FreeBSD allowed me to set up an environment that I can rely on without surprises. A computer that I turn on to run other applications, get work done, and not to worry about the operating system itself. It takes time to get it set right, but once you do it, you can rely on it fully.